Good afternoon, boys and girls. Happy New Year! Did you have a Happy New Year? Well, I missed that um, time when we used to come for Happy New Year time and had our hats and our blowers and um, thought about some things that we were going to do for the New Year or change or do better. So I hope you did that and I hope you had a good time with your family and friends and you celebrated a new year. So it is 2021. Wow, that's a new number and that's where we are. We're getting into the 20s, so 21. And I hope you all had a good vacation. I'm sorry you have to go back to school on Monday, but you'll make it and you're probably um, a little bored and ready to do a little bit different things and do some schoolwork. Well, just want to let you know I miss you and I want this to be our happiest year ever. And I want it to get better each day. So it's good to see you and I will be around tomorrow and give you some activities for the month of um, January that we're in and some activities for the new year and I hope you enjoy them. But I still miss you. Would love to be with you and I wish you were here in our kids church room and we could sing and hop and jump up and down and you could tell me what you got for Christmas and what you're going to do for the new year but we can't but here we are together now so I hope everybody is safe and and I uh, love you all and miss you so you know what today we are still in our theme life is a highway and I hope even during uh, your holidays you were living on God's highway and doing the things that pleases him so Today, we start a new one, but let me just uh, review a little bit. Can anybody remember what our first one was? I wish I could hear you, but one way, and that's what we started with the, uh, the highway signs. We had, there's only one way to heaven, and just to remind you what we um, learned on that, that time, a uh, couple of weeks that we did that, is that you cannot get there any other way, only on the highway to God. And can you remember our second one? Oh, I bet you can. And it is what? Stop. Stop. We need to stop. And we had lots of things that we um, talked about on, on the STOP. And I hope you remember those. But stop before you do anything. Listen to God. And do the things that we know are right. And then we had... Oh, my papers are getting yield yield we had to yield to the Holy Spirit we needed to listen to him to see what directions we needed to go and I hope you're still working on those well today we have a new one and it's a word uh, some of you might not be as familiar with it but it's called yield Merge. I mean sorry I just did I'm sorry but I'm thinking of what I've just talked about merge we yield to the Holy Spirit, but now we're going to talk about, for the next couple of weeks, we're going to merge together. And you see the sign up there? If you were on the um, highway and you were going to get onto another road, you have to merge together with the other cars. But you've got to do it slowly and safely so nobody gets hurt. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to merge. What do we need to do in merging for God? And that's what you're going to learn today. So let's look at our uh, main focus. And we want our um, highway patrolman to tell us what to do and how do we need to merge because that's where the, the patrolmans make sure that everybody is doing safe things on the road. So listen to our Jay Watkins. It's Officer Jay Walker and here to teach you another lesson on Life is a Highway. We've got another road sign to learn from today. It's this merge sign. Merge is used to help cars work together. 
when we have two lanes of traffic that are merging into one, the vehicles must work together. If not, they can crash. The same is true on the highway of life. We must learn to work together in order to accomplish what God has planned for us. God can take two different people, bring them together, and they can merge their abilities in order to accomplish great things like winning the world for Jesus. Isn't it awesome how God lets us meet people who also want to reach the world for Jesus? We can take our gifts and abilities and merge them with their gifts and abilities. Together, we can reach the world for Jesus much better than on our own. Well, kids, I know you're going to have an amazing time learning your lesson today. But every time you're riding down the highway and you see a merge sign, I want you to remember what you learned today. That we must work together in unity in order to accomplish what God has for us. This is Officer Jay reminding you to buckle up and stay safe. I'll see you next time on Life is a Highway. Another sign, look at all those signs in our, our video, and that's what we're learning. But today, merge. Remember the word merge. And it's kind of maybe a new vocabulary for some of you, but it means to come together or help each other to uh, stay on the same way. So our main focus today is Jesus Christ is the one and only way to get to heaven. Again, just like on our one way, we cannot get to heaven unless we are walking with God on the highway. And we have a power verse. And we are going to learn from John 14, 6. But before we do that, our What's Up. They didn't video a What's Up, and we missed that uh, because we love that uh, person that does different things and fun. God's Son is the only one way to heaven. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm on the wrong. Oh, uh, you're right. Sorry, boys and girls. I have two papers here. And I read... It got slipped over onto the wrong, wrong one. You and me, we agree. We can work in unity. So I wish, is it up there? Oh, yeah. Okay, so say it with me. It kind of rhymes. You and me, meaning two people together, we agree we can work in unity. Now, what does that word unity mean? It means together. Unity means to not be together to fight and say, no, I'm not going to do it your way. No, you do it my way, or I'm not going to do it. And, and, and argue all the time. It means that you are working together on the same idea. You agree, and you're going to do it together in a nice way for a reason. And our reason is everything we do, we want to do for God, whether we're uh, telling somebody about God or showing them in our life and having the right attitude. So read it again with me. You and me, we agree we can work in unity. So that's what we want to learn uh, these next couple of weeks. We want to work in unity. So let's listen to our power verse and see how that fits together with our theme today, merge, merging together, being together and doing things agree agreeable, and in unity. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get this party started. All right. Woo! How you doing, boys and girls? My name is Big Papa, taking you down the highway of life with a whole payload of power verses. You ready? Today's power verse says, How wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. Psalm 133.1 Sweet buttermilk biscuits. I love that power verse. You know what I love even more? When them girls stand up and say the power verse with me. Big pop up on the count of three. Here we go, girls. Stand up. One, two, three. How wonderful and pleasant. 
it is when brothers live together in harmony. Psalm 133 1. Oh, good job, girls. That tugged on my heartstrings. You guys have a seat. Now I need the boys, the boys to stand up and say the power works with me. Big pop up on the count of three. Here we go. One, two, three. How wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. Psalm 133 1. Who else shaved my head and used me as a surfboard? You did an excellent job. Sit on down. Boys and girls, today's road sign on the highway of life is merge, as in coming together in unity. We need help from each other. You think Big Pop get all this big rig all on his own? No way! I got loads of friends that help me out on the highway of life. I can't do it on my own, and you shouldn't do things on your own either. So boys and girls, let's merge together, and everybody say the powers with me. Big pop up on the count of three. Here we go. One, do it together now. Two, come on, everybody stand up. Three, how wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. Psalm 133, one. Hot <laughs> dog, no, boys and girls, let me tell you, you did a mighty fine job with that bear power verse. Go on and have a seat, you earned it. Well, boys and girls, it's time for old Big Papa to hit the highway of life. But I'll be seeing you next time with a whole other payload of power verses. <laughs> Here we go, boys. Well, are we glad that he's teaching us his power verse? Because he's funny and it helps us to enjoy it. But listen, how wonderful and pleasant. It is a good thing, that's what it's telling you, is when brothers, now it doesn't mean just boys, it means everybody, our brothers in the whole world. So it doesn't mean that not girls can't, can't do it, we have to do it, it's just a, a, um, an overall word, word. Live together in harmony. We all need to live in harmony. What's that big word? Some of you might not have heard that before. Harmony, when people are singing, and I don't sing very well because you guys hear me all the time. But people that are singing really nice, they sing in harmony, they match so that it just blends together. And you can't even tell who's singing what because it's the harmony together. And that's what God means. Do it in harmony so that you're just blending together and no one person is the stronger one. Everybody is working together. And you know that's sometimes people want, oh, I want to be recognized. No, I want to do it. I want people to see that I'm doing it. And you know what? That's not harmony. And that's what we're going to be talking about. And our, our story today is found in Exodus. And that's at the beginning of the Bible. And um, I hope you're reading your Bible and uh, looking at scriptures and looking to find a scripture you can memorize and reading God's word every day. It doesn't have to be a certain amount, but read his word every day. Day. So it's found in Exodus, and it's a story about Moses. And you guys have heard about Moses. He's in the Old Testament, and he did a lot of good things. And it takes place when um, Moses heard God speak to him, guess where? From a burning bush. The bush was talking to Moses. Now, only God can do that. And God said to Moses, I am have seen the suffering of my people in e Egypt. I'm sending you to lead them to freedom. Now, the uh, God's people had been uh, captured in Egypt, and they were being mistreated. And they'd been doing this for many, many, many years, and he thought, I'm going to free them. And he chose Moses to do it. And they have been slaves. They've been treated horribly, and it says about 400 years. Wow, I can't even imagine 400 years, but, um, you know, we live a, a pretty good life under 100. But 400 years, their whole families had been treated horribly by the Egyptians. So, God was calling Moses to go and lead the people into freedom. God had seen what they did. 
to the, his people and treating them horribly. And he says, okay, I'm going to send Moses to help free them and get them away from Pharaoh. So Moses was thinking about what God, and, and he was he hearing this message from a burning bush. It wasn't God standing there with him. And he was, he knew God so well that he knew that God was speaking to him through that bush. And he got a little worried and he said, you want me to do what? And then he said, I can't do it myself. God, I'm, I'm not a good speaker. So whatever happened, we don't know. But we don't know uh, if he had a speech impediment or if he had stuttering and he didn't think that they would um, listen to him. But he was scared. But he didn't think he had what it took to, to speak to Pharaoh, whether it was his, his speaking problem or he was scared. And God told Moses as soon as he said that, I can't do this. I, I'm not good at this. And some of you think that too. I couldn't do that. But you know what? If you step out and God tells you, like Moses is going to be doing, and he told was honest to God, whenever you have something in your heart or you think you should do something, you can be honest with God. And this is what Moses did. I can't do that, God. I don't speak well. And whatever else his problem was. But you know what God says? Don't worry. He says, your brother Aaron is on his way and he will help you to speak. He will be with you. So how many people are there going to be together now? Two. Moses is willing to do it, but he didn't think he could do a good job of his speaking uh, issue or his scaredness. But he said, I'm going to bring your brother Aaron. So when Aaron and Moses met together, they traveled and went before Pharaoh. Okay. Now Pharaoh was the king. He was the ruler. Now that's pretty scary to go up in front of a, a ruler where they had been captured, the Egyptians, for um, 400 years. So Moses uh, tried to get Pharaoh to free the, the, um, the people of Israel. And whatever they were telling him, you've got to free them. And they were scared because he's in front of the king. And they stood before him and said, God says, now they're telling him who, brought, who, who sent them to him, let my people go. And that's what God told him to do. Go tell him. Got to let my people go. But Pharaoh, what kind of man was he? He was a ruler and he had already kept him captive for 400 years. And he said, no. He wouldn't budge. He says, I'm not going to do that. So right then, Moses decided, I'll show you how strong and powerful that God is. And he, he's told uh, Aaron, throw down your staff. And when he did... It instantly turned into a snake. Wow, a stick. And he said, throw it down, and God made it turn into a stick. But that didn't scare them, because you know what? Pharaoh said, ah, nothing to be. And he had some magicians come over, and they did the same thing. And they threw it down, and their staffs became snakes. But guess what? The snake that came in from the um, staff of Aaron started eating up all of those snakes. So the, which snake was more powerful? God's snake. God's snake. And they swallowed up all of Pharaoh's snakes. So even after Pharaoh still refused to free the nation, he said, no, I'm not doing it. But you know what he did? He sent some, uh, God sent some horrible, terrible things that happened to their, uh, the people. They suffered with plagues, just like we have this, um, we can call it a plague, we can call it a sickness and a disease that's going around right in our uh, world right now with the COVID. And God sent a lot of horrible things that happened into the Egyptian people, but Pharaoh would not let them go. He says, no. So terrible things happened in the land of Egypt, but then finally, after these plagues were over, Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron to them, and he said, Take your people and leave. You are free. Finally, after hundreds of years of slavery, God was to free, the, God's people were free to leave Egypt. God had blessed and protected his people through all the terrible plagues. They didn't get all of it. 
And if they did certain things, they were safe from some of the uh, things that God had said. So, how did Moses and Aaron work together to do what God asked them to do? They led the Israelites out of Egypt because they worked together. Aaron didn't say, uh, well, if you can't speak, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get, I'm going to get the glory for this. No. He needed, he needed uh, uh, Moses as much as Moses needed Aaron. And because they worked together, they were able to accomplish what God wanted them to do. And the people of, of Israel were free. And they got to leave. And there's lots more to this story and um, what happened. And, and when we study in Sunday school, you know, how the Israelites walked through, you know, the, um, the water. And, but God's plan was to free the Israelites. Moses and Aaron knew the importance of, what's our word? Merging. They were merging together. We don't always call that when we work with each other. But they took that sign from our highway and they merged together. And they worked together. They didn't separate. And if you see this, when you merge onto the uh, freeway or a road, you are in the same lane just back to back or side by side. And they work together to get, accomplish what God wanted them to do. And you know what, boys and girls, there's a lot of things that you might be scared to do. And you know that God wants you to do it. And he might give you another partner or, or somebody to help you. But the words that I want you to remember is to work together, merge together for the same reason, and to work in unity because all of us that are Christians, we work together and we're not called individuals. You know what God wants us to be known as? The body of Christ. Because when we come to church, when all of you are in my kids' church and we're sitting here on our benches and we're standing up and singing, we are children of God. We're the body of Christ. And that's what happens when you work together. Don't you have more power when there's more people Together, if you were going to go fight somebody, wouldn't you want your friends to, um, we wouldn't want to fight anyway, but when you do something, you want to have help. So that's what our, our story is about, and we're going to learn how to use that in our life more next week, of merging and being united. Remember, if you're not united, it means you're not fighting. You're, you're going for the same reason, and there's nobody that's better than anybody else. So remember that, boys and girls. We're going to merge together. We're going to work together. We're going to be united. And we're going to do some great things for Jesus and to God. And we want to make him happy and be obedient to God's word, just like Moses. If Moses wasn't obedient and united with Aaron, that might not have happened. Or God would have had to find another way. So, boys and girls, this year, I want you to think about all of these road signs, and this one especially. Don't try to be the uh, most important person and work with other people to get things done. I want to pray, and then we're going to sing a song, and uh, some of you will remember it, and if you're new, you might not remember it, but this is one that we, we like to sing, and it's kind of an action song. But I want to pray for you because, you know what, I want this, this year to be your best year, and we're just starting and it's only a few days into January, but you know what? Every day, I want to see it to get better, and I want God to help you to do better with Him, and think about this one, be united and merge together. So let's pray just real quickly, and then we'll stand up and sing. Father, thank you for a new year. We're in 2021, and I pray that as we study these um, signs that you will help remember Help us to remember them, what to do in our lives, and especially this one, God. I pray that uh, everybody will think about how to work together to make our life better and their life better and help other people. And you are always going to be with us and help us to always keep our heart open that you will guide us down the highway and we are going to do the right things and help us remember the lessons that you've taught us through God's word and through these lessons that we will do things 
and do great things for you. And we thank you for it. And I pray for all my boys and girls that they will be safe and that they will walk on your highway and live for you in all their life. Thank you, Jesus, for a new year. And we are going to look forward to many good things that you're going to do for us. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, let's stand up and let's sing this one. As soon as you hear it, you will remember. And we haven't sing it for a long time because we haven't been here for almost a year. So enjoy it. on the doorstep and have a good week back at school and remember God's with you and he's going to help you every day. I love you and still miss you but God is with us and he's going to do a good work in us. Goodbye and have a good week. See you later. <laughs>